And we are live on the Starch Queens Q&A Talking Tuesday. So Hi, Jean. Well, how are you? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? I'm good. good. I am super good. Let me just get our little uh, program going here. And thanks, honey. So, and, well, uh, let me welcome everybody. Welcome to yeah. Talking Tuesdays with the Starch Queens. And I'm Jean Schumacher. Queen of Diamonds, and my partner is Nancy Matthews, who's the Queen of Hearts, and together we're the Starch Queens. And our lifestyle program and weight loss program is online. We provide coaching, weight loss, we provide recipes, an educational program, and this helps everybody to achieve weight loss success and healing. Because we know, we've seen a lot in the, in the groups out there, the Facebook groups, that a lot of people have stalled in their weight loss in, on their plant-based journey. So we can get you going again and get you past that plateau and get it onwards. So you can find our program at www.sqweightloss.com. Awesome, Jean. Oh. Thank you so much. And also we want to ask everybody if you wouldn't mind doing us a favor and sharing our go live onto your timeline so we can reach more people. That's what we always wanted to do. And and we want to say hi to Mary. Glad, hi, Mary. We're glad we're back too. Oh my goodness. It was just too long. Two weeks was just way too long. Jean, tell everybody about going back to school. Oh my gosh. It has been, it's, it's like riding a bucking Bronco, you know, with all the meetings and everything else and then getting everything back into it. And then once you get into your routine, you're fine. But in the beginning, you're just like, wow, oh my gosh. You know, and the, all yeah. the meetings and the nights and you got to be back here for the welcome this and welcome that. And, and it's nice to see everybody and get back into the routine. But wow, just kind of a little bit overwhelming. And while yeah, you're yeah. doing that, I'm just going to point out my sinuses are acting up just a little bit. And this has been like the absolute from Pure Haven Essentials, because I used to use that Vicks Vapor Rub all the time, you know, but that's got petroleum based products in it and you don't want to be doing that. So this is called Breathe Pure Vapor Rub. And I'm telling you, this has been amazing. This, and there's another one called, it's a, a blend of essential oils that I use in my diffuser called Be Well. And it just really helps to open up my sinuses so I can breathe and sleep at night. So that has been my savior. And especially for your nose, because like you've been, I've been blowing my nose and it's like, seriously, how much more stuff can come out? I mean, you know, without being gross. But TMI. I know, right, TMI? But honestly, my nose, you know, it's like, it's, you know, the tissues are starting to feel like sandpaper. So this has just been such amazing comfort on my nose. That's good. Yeah, yeah. because I know whenever I get a cold and you get that, you know, the acid in the mucus when it's draining is so harsh on your skin. Oh. And I know the last time I got a cold, you know, your nose just is brutal. Hey, Jan, thanks for joining. We appreciate uh, that you're joining the Starch Queens tonight. And we I see Fran came in. So yep, welcome, Fran. Fran. Yeah, if you guys want to share on your timeline, it would be greatly appreciated. But we're going to get going here. But first of all, we want to say today being September 11th, 9-11, uh, we know that we have people from all over the country and around the world that do tune into the Starch Queens. And we want to share our our memories, our condolences to all the first responders and the victims of 9-11 and we'll never forget. So we just want to say that we never forget and we're stronger as a nation. Gosh, a bad day. It could have just been, that was such a bad day. I remember it. Bad day. You remember where you were? Well, my husband was in New York. He was on the, uh, at the world trade center at three o'clock in the morning, the day that it happened. <gasps> and, yeah. And so Nick was there, uh, just, just a, five hours before the first uh, plane hit and I was home uh, in California. So yeah, we had a heck of a time getting Nick back to the West coast. Wow. He, uh, he was actually in upstate New York in Albany for training, but he had gone into the city for some sightseeing and got lost in Man lower Manhattan and uh, him and his coworker, they were there till the wee hours of the morning and then got out just in, you know, at five o'clock in the morning and cross the hall and tunnel back on the expressway back up to Albany. And so, yeah, it was very, very scary. So, yeah. But he, he got out before the planes hit? Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Talk and about a lucky. Center. 
yeah, yeah, it was very lucky. So it was very, it's a, uh, we're very lucky that we, uh, we have Nick and it was just a really, really bad day for our country. Yeah. It was it a bad was. day. So we it could have been worse. It could have been yeah. a lot worse. I yeah. mean, if, if they had hit, like there's the nuclear power plant just up the road, that could have been hit. Oh, could have been bad. It that would have been, been bad. really bad. Yep. But, well, we are just uh, anyway. recognizing for that today is 9-11 and yeah. that we are remembering. So that's what we wanted to start our program with yeah. tonight. So we have a good question. And this is a really good question from, from Fran, ba- Fran Botzer, who is in our Starch Queens program. Fran has been... But wait, um, wait, wait. But before, I just got a shout out to Fran because she's hit her weight goal. And she has hit it. I mean, nailed it. She's, and she went to her, I don't know, what was it? 40th, 50th reunion? 40th. She's... 40th 40th so she gets the gold star time big time i'm telling you seriously so fran kudos you work so hard at that and we just want to recognize your achievement that is just amazing it is so good at power plants power plants so on that note fran is is at her her goal weight and she's in maintenance now and she has a question for the Starch Queens. All right, shall I read it? Go for it. She says, I have a question about supplements for hair, nail, hair, nails, and skin. I've been plant-based for about seven plus years now. My nails are weak and I have ridges on them. So she's asking what, uh, what gives? What's the deal? What's with my nails? You know, your hair looks great, Fran, and your skin is just glowing. So nails are kind of a conundrum for a lot of people. How do your nails look, Jean? I mean, I, I could get mine in there. You can see minor, yeah, your minor. Your, I, I keep mine short. Yeah. So I keep mine short. And I'm an accountant, so I'm pounding on the nail, on the adding machine and computer all day, but they're still getting there. But my fingernails were super brittle, super peeling, like, my thumb, the, it would peel back, and um, I was in the same boat as a lot of people, but that's the way it's been my entire life, entire life with my nails, until really it's been about the last couple of years that my nails have started getting stronger, and I attribute it to eating more of a broad spectrum of plant-based foods and foods higher in minerals, and I had a really thing, an odd thing happen with one of my toes. I, I had my... So you have your big toe and your second toe. Well, on my right toe, they were kind of like these, the, the um, podiatrist said they're a kind of a cone toe. The toenail kind of grows curved and weird. And I've had that my whole life. And I've always had, I call them my ugly toes. The toenails were kind of like cone, you know, it's just like weird. They're kind of like a, just ugly. And so <laughs> my dog claw. So, but, but when I went plant-based, my toenail is completely normal. My whole toe changed. The tip of my toe like broadened, the nail flattened out, and it looks perfectly normal now. I do not have any explanation for it. And my left toe is actually starting to do that now. And I just find that completely odd. And it's only been since I've been plant-based. So really go figure. That's just really strange. So I just say that's another more evidence of our body healing with a plant-based uh, lifestyle. But, but what's interesting well, um, but, is uh, still within like the nails, it also takes a longer time for you to see results of yes. changes that you've made because yes. the nails take so, so much time to grow out yep. and to strengthen. It's not like you're going to see like, oh, today I'm going to do this and I'm going to see the effect tomorrow. No, no. We're talking months, 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 and sometimes years, like right. some of the years that you've seen and changes in yeah. your toes. And, and yep. you know, for and me, I, I keep my nails short. I mean, first of all, I don't use nail polish. That's some seriously toxic stuff. Right. So I don't use I nail don't polish anymore. at all. And it, But my nails, I have noticed, have become stronger because uh, they oh, used to split too. and crack and yeah. break all the time. But And I just said, well, that's just how my nails are. But I have noticed that they, they grow a lot faster, and I notice I'm cutting them more often. Yeah. But, you know, we go ahead. Tell yeah. us what we need to use. So, so basically what, the na- what our nails need is silica. Silica is, Jean, you're the chemist. Tell us what silica is, and then I'll tell you where we're going to get silica from. 
All right. Silica is basically like sand. It's a, it's a mineral, okay, that you're going to find in where? Plants. And so we want to make sure that we're eating enough of those plants that contain silica that are going to help give us the strong nails, the strong, strong hair. Yep. Yep. And so where do we get those? Dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. Dark leafy greens are a great source. Millet is a great source. And what's really neat is that silica, the role that silica plays in in our body is it delivers the nutrients to the peripherals of the body. So the silica it delivers those minerals to our nails, our fingernails, our toenails, our hair, our eyebrows, our lashes, all of those, the silica plays a role in all of that. So another great area of food is, I made a list here, is alfalfa. So alfalfa sprouts, if you guys like sprouts, I love alfalfa sprouts. A lot of good, rad, um, silica there, radishes, romaine lettuce, burdock root, cucumbers, bell peppers, tomatoes, steel cut oats, millet, and of course, dark leafy greens. So I eat all of those except a burdock root. I don't even know what a burdock root is. Do you? Nope. I never heard of it. Yeah. So, so but apparently um, it contains silica. Apparently it does. And so these are all plants that grow from the dirt, from the <clears> ground, <throat> you know, and so this is where they're getting their silica from. So what I always say is that you've got to know the source of your fruits and vegetables. Yes. So if you're eating commercially grown vegetables that are in questionable soil conditions that don't have a lot of mineral content, you need to change where you're purchasing your produce from because you want to get a lot of produce that's from really high quality medium you want this this soil to be mineral healthy. rich and healthy and being a farmer's daughter i know firsthand how the soil can be depleted through commercial farming and you get the chemicals in there and we'll get to that and that depletes the the quality of the soil so then again your vegetable quality is depleted so make sure that your veggies are coming from an organic farmer if you can Local is always good. And if you're not sure from the grocery store, ask your grocer. I found, Jean, that our grocer at all of the stores we shop at are the smartest people. And they're so wanting to talk to the customers. I talk to them about, do you know where this comes from? And like our big grocery store in town, Rayleigh's, they have a big promotion where they always are saying, you know, that they purchase their um, produce from local suppliers. So that's really good. But again, know the source of the soil source that you're getting your produce from. So we don't want to say go out and buy silica supplement because there's, there's more to this story for your nails because you want to avoid foods that deplete the minerals from your body. And the mineral depleting contributors are trans fats. Trans fats will deplete your body of silica and trans fats are in almost all processed foods, fast food. Um, and so you want to, to make sure that you don't have those. Um, well, it, it interferes with the body's ability to absorb those healthy fatty acids. Exactly. Like from avocados, olives. Right. Uh, what else is another great source of um, oh, nuts? Nuts yeah. also. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you are not eating anything processed, which we know, Fran, that you're not eating anything processed. But for those who are listening that might not be plant-based, consider this, that trans fats can do even do, that's one of the damaging effects of trans fat is it depletes your, your minerals. And when you have a min mineral deficiency, a lot of things can go really wrong within the body and your nails, your hair, and are really always the first indicators of this. So you also want to watch. So the other thing that I found is that think of your healthy fats as moisturizer for the inside. So, you know, you don't want to have too much because too much is too high calorically dense. So right. a little bit goes a long way and you want to get enough protein. We always want to make well, sure. Well, don't forget about, before you talk about protein, yeah. what about sugar? Oh yeah, you go for it. Well, sugar, sugar too can also wreak havoc on the body. And that's one of the things that we talk yeah. about in the starch queens. We try and go SOS free. And we know sugar is a tough one to give up, you know, especially yeah. if you're putting it into things like your oatmeal or, you know, if you're still putting it in your beverage or whatever. But this can also help deplete the body of these vital nutrients like calcium, magnesium, zinc, sulfur. 
So just make sure that you're not including sugar as well, sugar-free. Yep, and protein. Our, our nails are made of keratin. Keratin comes from protein. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a good, clean protein source from legumes and beans and make sure that you're, if you're seeing that your nails are not as healthy as you want them to be, I would ramp up my bean consumption because that's one of the things that I did, Fran, after reading Dr. Greger's How Not to Die. And he is a really big promoter of beans and legumes. And I found that I just love and adore black beans. So I'm trying to have them at two to three times a day where I'm having a half a cup three times a day. And I have found that my fingernails are just growing like wildfire and they're stronger. So I'm getting, you know, we're all getting enough protein for to be healthy, you know, sufficient, but it could be, you know, as we age, as we have, we're postmenopausal women, our protein requirements go up. I got that from my vegan doctor. She said, Nancy, I want you to have a little bit more protein. And when I did that, I noticed that my nails were just going, just really growing healthy. And I also use a glass nail file, file made all the difference in getting into the cuticles and using a really good moisturizer around the cuticles really helps too. And then of course, biotin, biotin, vitamin B7 is necessary. If I am always, like I said, in our educational uh, ride along this morning is I supplement with B12. So here's my methyl B12 that I take, it's vegan and organic, but I was taking before I bought this and I ran out of the, the B complex. I was taking a B complex that had more of the B7s, B10, and making sure that I was getting all those. But then, like I said this morning, I had my blood work done and my vitamin minerals were all within the perfect normal range. So for me, I would just go with increase your beans, legumes, Make sure your B12, your B7, your biotin is up there. No trans fats and get, and, you know, get some avocado in. And, and if you're curious about your mineral and, oh, and silica, get those dark leafy greens in there and go 90 days. If your nails haven't changed in 90 days, maybe then you want to go to your doctor, have a blood panel done and get your mineral and vitamin screen done so you can see if you have any deficiencies and know where your produce is coming from. And I really have fallen in love with CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture. They're really good about crop rotation, getting that nitrogen and extra minerals into the soil so the quality of your food is superior. So that's where I would start to get, to get what, my nails um, healthy. What B12 do you get? I have, mine is the, and I know I've used that one before, but uh, look at the ingredients on that. This is the garden of life. This is right. the or certified organic B12. This mm -hmm. is the methylcobalamin. Right. Why? What, what, what am I looking for in the ingredients? Does that have oil in it? No, not this one. Okay. The D, no. the vitamin D3 has oil in it. No, not all of them because I found it. I got, this is the one I use. This is the organic. This is the Garden of Life, my kind organics. They do have ones that have the, vit that, that have the oil in it, but uh, this does not. This is V3. Well, I bought the one that did. You did. I you did. did. Your research. I so, didn't. I threw it in the cart. <laughs> exactly. That, and you have to look at the ingredients. Hello? Vegan, organic, boom, and it went. I did not. The label detective okay. just took it for granted. Okay, well, this one does not have oil in it, and this one is 2,000, and I use, I break it in half for me. My husband takes the whole one. He gets the 2,000, but I get I just break it in half because I spend more time outdoors than he does, so I don't think I need as much vitamin right. D. That's just my personal opinion, but my vitamin D levels are, are you know, okay, you know, for the most part. So. Good. Well, I use, this is just from my local health food store, Country Life Methyl B12, 5,000 micrograms, certified gluten-free, supports energy, stamina. They're that's tool. a lot. Yeah, I, I, that's the one I bought. But I only take like two a week, one or two a week. That's a lot though, because according to Dr. McDool, you only need five micrograms a day. That's it. My, uh, my grandson is FaceTiming me, so I'm going to have to say no. Excuse okay. me real quick while I mute myself and tell my husband to call his grandson. 
There you go. All right. Well, I like the this one, the the vegan certified organic, the my kind. This is a sublingual spray, and I spray this one time a week. And this is only, I think this is 500 micrograms. This is oh, you can't good. you can't find them lower. They used to make it at right. 250 micrograms, which would have been perfect. You know, according to Dr. Dougal, you only need five micrograms a day. Right, and, and you can't find that. So no. I just saw the five and the three <clears throat> zeros after it and went, okay, I'll just take one a year. <laughs> exactly. It, is, it, it, it will accumulate in your system. So right. you know, for that, I wouldn't even take like, you know, a month, you know. Yeah, exactly. Because you're going to be fine. But I yep. take this and this is 500 micrograms. So I just take a half a spray once a week on Saturdays. Call it a day. And again, my blood, my blood levels, you know, Perfect. B12 tested. And yeah, me fine. too. But that's kind of high. I, yeah, it is. And then I did because Nick and I did have our blood work done and we were both low on vitamin D because, you know, we both work indoors and with all of, you know, life, we just don't get out and get out every day and get that 15 right. to 20 minutes that Dr. McDougall recommends that we get out in the sun, strip down let the sunshine hit us. I mean, that feels so good. I did, I did it a few times this summer and it was like, oh, I love Dr. McDougall's recommendation. It is just feels so good. It but does. we don't get to do that because that's not, not, well, not in my lifestyle right now. So I've got the certified vegan D3, 100% plant-based derived, promotes bone and immune health. And it is from Country Life. It's a pretty uh, common brand in most health food stores. Not very expensive. This might've been 10 or $12. And I take, this is 5,000 IU. That's what the doctor recommended because of our being low on D3. And, I, and when I remember to take it, I'd maybe take two or three a week and that's it. Nick tries to take it every day. So that's, that's our two supplements that we use. And I'm not in love or married to either one of those brands. My, my, my rule is vegan, organic, obviously no oil, and, um, and a good price. And I want it to be a good quality. That's me. That's what I want. And unless you have or found that you're lacking something, you know, within your within it, and you might want to try and change that within your diet. But those are the only things that we recommend in terms of supplements. You know, right. B12, yeah. and and unless you need it for you know vitamin D, if you're not getting outside, you know, the best source is getting outside in the sun. I like that Fran commented that you can also get vitamin B12 from nutritional yeast, and I have really taken a, a liking to nutritional yeast. I always thought it was just kind of like had a funky flavor. It wasn't my thing. But now, you know, your taste buds change with the lifestyle. And I'm liking putting some nutritional yeast on my, my vegetables and my potatoes and rice. And that's another great source of vitamin B12. But what is it, Jean, about, B, about nutritional yeast? I read that it's there's fortified. some... Is there, it's fortified. So explain fortified. the fortification. Yeah. It's not that so it comes with it. It's just, it's fortified. It's just fortified. So there's people in our, in our plant-based community that buy their nutritional yeast that's not fortified. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, just throwing that out there. I want to talk a little bit. It's a great question, Fran. We hope that that gives you some pointers on getting your fingernails um, stronger. Cause I don't know, I'm, I'm a girl. I like having long nails and, but ever since, you know, I've been learning about all of the chemicals in what are those tips called? What are they made of? I've already, I've totally blocked Acrylics. it. Out. Acrylic nails oh, and that yeah. glue they put on top and the <laughs> UV light, the gel, all the chemicals in there, you know, and I think about all those poor nail techs that grind that stuff off and you breathe it in. And I'm like, you know, I'm done with this. I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. So anyway, okay. Plantrician project. I just want to do a shout out to um, Dr. Kim Williams. He's um, organizing the Plantrician Project, where it is a group of our plant-based doctors that they hold an annual event where they're educating and teachers teaching doctors about plant-based nutrition from around the country, around the world. They convene once a year for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They have food. Uh, Dr. Garth Davis, I mean, many of the big doctors do presentations on how a plant-based diet can reverse disease. So I think it's really neat that, that our luminary doctors are taking this to so many other doctors so that eventually all of us will have access in our communities 
to a general practitioner, a family practitioner, a lifestyle doctor, who's going to give you a recommendation for eating a potato versus having a, you know, a vial of insulin. Right. So, so these are the things that I just want to recognize that because I think it's really important that this is happening and it's growing. Last year they had like, I believe a thousand. And I heard this year it's almost doubled. So this is the, the, the truth about nutrition and healing is getting to our mainstream doctors. And I'm just thrilled to see that. So. Well, I'm excited because I'm going to see Kim, Dr. Kim Williams October 6th. He is going to be presenting at the Montefiore Conference. And there are still a few places left. So if you're interested in going, it's in the Bronx, October 6th. It's an all-day conference. Caldwell Esselstyn's going to be there. Colin Campbell's going to be there. Neil Barnard's going to be there. Kim Williams is going to be there. Michelle McMacken is going to be there. I mean, we're talking some of the big, you know, superstars big of the names. world. And I can't wait. And I get to go. Dr. Otsfeld is having a thank, thank you for the doctors coming in. And he invited me to come. So awesome. I get That's to go awesome. hang out with them and have dinner. So I'm Woo-hoo. really excited, right? I know. Super, awesome. super excited. Awesome. Go hang Excellent. out with them and then see them all day. Their presentations are amazing. So if you, I'll post it in below the information for Montefiore, but it is, and if you know anybody and it's open, it's not just medical doctors, it's open to everybody to come, but you can get credit for, you know, the medical doctors get credit, special credit. So they can get credit for that for in-service. And I can't say enough. I went last year and it was mind blowing. I mean, first of all, the food was incredible, but just being there with all these amazing people and just hanging out, talking to them is just incredible. That gives you some serious, serious motivation. It builds your confidence, your yeah. self-esteem. It gets you, you know, geared up and charged up and, and gets you recentered for your why and staying right on track. And the more, the more we know, the better we do. So uh, real quick, I want to talk about potato burnout. <gasps> Can somebody, what? Uh, the starch queens, potato burnout? Is there such a thing? Hey, can it? Does it happen? I don't know. Who, who in their right mind could be burned out on potatoes? Well, I, uh, I've been hearing some rumblings through the plant-based community that people are sick of potatoes. Oh, don't tell, don't tell Dr. McDougal. No, just no, no. Don't no. tell Dr. McDougal, the poor guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. He'll just have a, he'll have a faint attack. So no, cause I can't imagine being, uh, yeah, no, I just can't even imagine. I know. I know. I mean, I, I love I, potatoes. I can't I, imagine being burnt out. I think about the years that I did the Atkins and the low carb thing and potatoes were the enemy. And I, you know, it's like, gosh, I could probably eat potatoes for the rest of my life and never, ever get sick of them. But people do. Everybody has different taste buds. Everybody has different, um, has any, you know, different likes and dislikes. And so I wanted to give a shout out to those who are not a fan of the potato right now and where you can get your starch from other sources. So I like brown rice. So we have in the Starch Queens program, the potato hour. And the potato hour is that three to four o'clock time of day where you're hungry and you're wanting to go to the snack bar or the snack machine and get something that is higher calorically dense and it's not on plan or it might be a bag of nuts or something that's going to give you you know, that instant dopamine hit that you shouldn't have. So we, we say pack a potato, but I also like to have a cup of brown rice. Um, what is so delicious is the Bima and Paws sesame ginger um, balsamic yeah. vinegar. And I'll warm up the brown rice and I'll put some of the Bima and Paws sesame ginger balsamic vinegar on that brown rice. And I'm not kidding you. It is so good. So that is an alternative to a potato. Well, I like with brown rice, I'll take just some hummus and I'll warm up the, the rice. I'll put a little bit of water and I'll put like a tablespoon of hummus in like, like say maybe I have a cup, cup of rice somewhere in there and I'll mix that up and make almost like a sauce with the wow. hummus. Oh, oh my gosh. Good. Oh, so good. good. Yeah. So, so good. that's a great option if you have potato burnout. Oats, I mean, oat meal doesn't have to be just for mornings, just like potatoes don't have to be just for lunch or for dinner. You know, you can have your oatmeal anytime during the day, have a, a cup of steel cut oats with, you know, some, some fruit on it that work qualifies too as a starch. It's a real healthy starch. 
and it's a whole grain. So you get a starch. Now I can't remember if that's a, is that, if you eat steel cut oats, is that a resistance starch gene or does it have to go through the cooking process? I have to look I can't that remember. up. I can't remember either. But still, it is a lot better option than going to the snack bar or going for a fast food fix or something like that is uh, keeping some, they have pre-cooked rice. You can cook it ahead, put it in one cup serving cups, keep it in your fridge or freezer at work. And, you know, I don't like to use the microwave, but sometimes if you have to use it because you're, like Jean says, you got your inner raccoon coming out, you know, eat it. Put it in the yeah. heat it in the microwave it's uh, it's not going to be the end of the world because you're getting so many more nutrients throughout the day that you know you're instantly you know dealing with that hunger that's going to take you to the dinner hour baked well, potatoes the, i go ahead gene well the brown rice also too is has a much better benefit for you than just the white rice because it's got the hull the bran layer the germ all of that has been removed for the white rice right so you want to keep all of those pieces there because that provides the fiber, that provides potassium, selenium, choline, phosphorus, right. magnesium, all of these nutrients that are just amazing. So definitely you want to, to keep it in the brown rice family. Yeah, definitely. And, and like Kathy from Snap Vegan, said, Vegan says, uh, potatoes aren't the only starch, you know. So yeah, we know, that's true, that's what we're talking about, is all the different kinds of starches. And starches in every single plant out there so you can right. get starch from from corn. vegetables from corn corn is a great starch option peas. so yeah peas but if you're getting burned out on just having the potato hour or potatoes in general mix them up put them into some potato soup air fried potatoes potato boats and and then also just take a potato break it's okay if you don't want to have a russet potato have a sweet potato or a yam, you know, try them in different ways, air fry them, or just have brown rice. Now, my husband prefers brown rice. I prefer sweet potatoes. So we do both in our household. So there'll be times that I'm sick of potatoes. I'll do brown rice and he'll do potatoes. We switch it up. That way we're making sure we get plenty of starch in so that we're um, satiated and we have a really high energy level because that's mm -hmm. where we get our, get our energy from. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So well, I would like to take a little bit of the brown rice and add just a little bit of barbecue sauce, get it out and add that to it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's that bone sucking sauce. Oh yeah. I mean, a little bit higher on the sugar side, but you know, you're only taking a little bit, you know, you're taking a right. little bit, you know, like a tablespoon, tablespoon and you're thinning it out just to give a little bit of flavor to the rice. Oh, right. wow. Yeah. I'm really not good. kidding. There's so many different ways. And Kara says, potatoes aren't the only, I'm not, uh, Kara says with all the different ways to make potatoes, how could you be, you know, get sick of them? I can't, I just can't imagine. It's just not, it's just not going to happen for me. No. So. Potatoes and I, we're fast friends. Yeah. And my potato waffles, I mean, I continue to make those, I mean, periodically. Every once in a while, I'll go down to the freezer in, in the garage and I'll, I'll see the Trader Joe bag and I go, oh, I haven't had potato waffles in a while. And I'll just pull those out and make some of those. And that is just amazing. I mean, there's just so many different ways to cook potatoes and eat them. It's, I, I don't know. I want to talk about your potato waffles. I know that you have a, a video on them. Let's share with our viewers your secret. Like what is your, I have a round Cuisinart potato or potato waffle iron and mine stick every single time. So I have to get in there with the fork and get them out. But your potato waffles turn out perfect every time. It's your what attitude. Is, well, it could be, but what is the secret? I mean, what does it say? Obviously okay. you don't use oil. No, I don't. Of course not. No oil at all. But I also think I have a newer one. So, and the plates pop out, which help tremendously yeah, mine because don't. the plates pop out, which allows me to flip the plate over, you know, flip the plate itself right. on top of another right. plate. And in the right. video, I show this, I demonstrate this technique, but I think one of the biggest things is to get as much moisture out of the potato as possible. So one of the things I do is I'll take the, the, I use the Trader Joe's shredded potatoes and those seem to work absolutely the best. And I'll just rinse them off just to get them from being frozen to not being frozen. 
and you and pat I, them dry? And not just pat them dry. I literally wring them out. I'll put them in between a towel and literally wring them out, okay? And then I'll dump those into just a bowl. You know, add whatever seasonings. I, I particularly love and adore the onion powder, garlic powder, and I'll put a little bear bear because you know me and my bear oh, bear. Yeah, that stuff's so good. Oh my God. So, and I'll put some of that on, but you can put whatever spices that you like and be bold, be brave, be adventurous. And then I just put the whole package into the, the waffle iron. And then the other thing is I do is I mash it down and I literally take a full tea kettle and I'll put that on top or I'll take like my 10 pound weights and put those on top. Just oh, to I had no idea. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't do that. I, that's one little extra tip. You also want to make sure that your, your waffle iron is preheated. So before right, you put that. it in, that it's completely as hot as it goes, hot, hot, hot. And then I put on, on my, my weights on top just to mash it down a little bit more. But once I do that and I take that out, then I'll cut them in half with, you know, my cooking scissors and then I'll pop it into the toaster oven and I will toast it for like one more cycle of in the toaster oven. Oh, you can pop those out and uh, the crunch is just incredible. Just incredible. Even more so than it comes out with from the toast from the from the waffle iron. So popping them. Yeah, into the I toaster. did not know. See, I learned something here because when I do mine, I just do, you know, they're they're so the shredded potatoes in the bag are so wet. So I just was patting them dry in a with paper towel and then I gotta thanks, honey. And I'm just not getting them dry enough. And and my my waffle iron isn't as big as yours. What brand is yours again? Cousinart. Cousinart. Okay, so mine is uh, you know it's just the little round one. So I'm huh? gonna really quick, real quick. I want to interject because Peggy Foster asks, "What is Bear Bear?" And I and she spelled it B A R E B A R E E, and it's Berber, Bear Bear. Is it Bear Bear? B E R. Kim Kim Campbell says it's Bear Bear. Okay, yeah. that's how it's pronounced. That's how she said. Because I would have said bear, you know, Berber myself. I, I think to read it, it's B E R B E R E. So I was thinking bear bear, bear. I just call it bear bear. I mean, everybody calls it bear bear. But that's what Kim, it is. Peggy. Kim Campbell says bear bear. So I'll go with what Kim says because you know she's an expert. She's the yeah, expert. Me and she actually has a recipe for bear bear because you can get it as Nancy's pointing out at Whole Foods, and I love that one, that flavor. And there's different mixtures you can go order it online on Amazon, but you can also make your your own. Okay, because a lot of them do. And one of the things Kim pointed out is a lot of them, like that one that you have in your hand, contains salt. Okay. Oh, it does? It does. And so what you can do is make your own. And Kim Campbell has yeah. the recipe. I know. I know it does because that's one of the reasons why I like it so much because yeah. it has salt because I can't have salt. I don't so anyway, notice it. Well, anyway, but for Nick, you might want to you know. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. I mean, as you can see, I got these, Jean, when I was with you last year in on Cape Cod, when we went to Whole Foods. Right. And look, it's half a bottle. So this is tell, shows you how much we've used in a year. Okay. Well, uh -huh. I go through probably one of those bottles every two weeks, three weeks. No, no not no, me. Four weeks. Not me. I mean, it's in everything. I'm Honest to God, it's in everything. I mean. This is from Whole Foods. This, yes. this is from Whole Foods, but they also have it in most ethnic food stores, whole mm -hmm. foods, uh, natural food stores. And like, like what Jean said, if you have Kim Campbell's Plant Pure cookbook, the Plant recipe Nation for it is Plant Pure Nation's cookbook, recipe book, it's in there. So yeah. you don't have to buy this one. So, but it is. It's and you can make it yourself. She, yeah. she makes it ahead of time and just buy, you know, just makes it in bulk and she's got it there and she just keeps it in an airtight package and that way you don't have to have salt on it you know right i i think it's but. great it's such a great you it's a great versatile seasoning it it's is good. it adds good. such a uh, i mean it has a little kick not gonna lie it has some kick to it but the flavor it's just it, it, i i'm really loving like the indian ethiopian flavors oh my gosh and if whole foods has a whole line of that in that brand they have a whole line of seasonings that are just fantastic just really yeah. really good good flavors good 
Well, I'm to, I'm so excited because I have some frozen, uh, and I also want to talk about potatoes because we're on the potato subject. Is the shredded potatoes? Is that I'm going to go? I'm going to just bite the bullet, and I'm going to invest in the same griddle that you have because yours technically is not a quote unquote waffle iron. Is yours a panini press? No. Is it is a waffle iron? It's a waffle iron, but it okay. also has plates for pancakes. Oh, okay. I never use those. But. Right. Okay, because I know that a lot of people do the potato waffles with a panini press. And the same thing would apply is you would have to put the weight on it to really get that crisp right. sec crisp because the top, for me, the bottom crisp at the top doesn't, but I wasn't putting weight on it. So that makes sense. I'm going to give it another try. I'm excited. Well, um, I, I got it a bit Beth and Beyond, the, you know, the Cousinart, but just make sure that the plates pop out, whatever the, the, the brand is. You know, the Cous I got the Cousinart one. But the, po the plates pop out from both the top and the bottom, and I okay. throw them right in the dishwasher. You know, it, yep. they don't stick. They just pop right out. It's amazing. I just think the surface is, is nonstick, you know. Yeah. Yep. Plus, the potatoes are, are really dry. Uh, I think that's, that's one of the biggest tricks. That's a key, a key thing. And what, a, what I do is every week I do a five-pound bag of potatoes in the Instant Pot, and then they put them in the fridge and then if we're getting towards the end of the week and we haven't eaten them all I have many 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 times taken the potato skin and all and I shred it and I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and I'll then make hash browns out of those mm -hmm. either in an open non-stick skillet non-stick skillet which would be the Swiss diamond skillet or you know attempt it in the potato the potato waffle but it hasn't turned out very good that I usually just do it in my pan so I'll just brown it toast it on my mm -hmm. pan but it's a great thing. A lot of people don't realize is just to take those cooked russet potatoes and just shred them and make your own hash browns. It's really expensive buying them at the grocery store. And you really have to watch because lots of them have a lot of sodium and sugar. A That's lot why of I like the, the yeah, and oil. oil and oil. oil. Yep. I like the Trader Joe's ones. They, they have nothing. It's just potatoes. Good. That's it. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions for us? We have worked through the questions and agenda topics that we have today. Well, the other thing I was going to say real quick about potatoes is we talked about those, but another great um, way to get your starches in is burritos, Buddha bowls, quinoa. I love quinoa. Quinoa in soups and salads and well, sure, quinoa how you make tacos. Your quinoa. You make you add oh. the, the lemon, the lime. 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 So what I do with my quinoa, I make it in the Instant Pot and it cooks in a minute, but I like to take the juice of one whole lime and I rub it, really roll it hard on the counter to get the juices because uh, limes are so dense, you know? Yeah. So I rub them, cut it in half, and then I have one of those squeeze juicers and I'll put the juice of a lime in the quinoa and then I have my zester and I will zest all that green right off of the lime and put it right into the instant pot and stir it in. And it makes such a good little uh, flavor profile to quinoa because quinoa is like rice. It's got really no flavor, you know, it's pretty right. bland, but it's a, it's a perfect protein. It's a pure protein. So Fran, this is a great protein for you to add to your, for your getting your nails stronger is have a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of quinoa and add some lemon, some lime to it. It's absolutely dish delicious. Yeah, and then don't actually, you zest first? I zest it and put it in the Instant Pot. Yeah, I mean, I zest first, then I get the juice out. Whichever way. I've done it both. I do it both ways. Oh, I no, no, no. I zest. I'm sorry. I said that backwards. I zest first, yeah. then I juice it. So obviously, because yeah. if I was, I couldn't zest it when it was nothing left of it, but no. I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, You're okay. like, what? what? No, no, I'm sorry. I said it backwards. So no, you I were just testing me to see if I was first. paying attention. I know. No, I just zest it. I zest it first, then juice it, throw it in there. And I do that. Basically, proportions are if I'm making two cups of quinoa, I do one lime. If I'm doing like three or four cups of quinoa, which makes is a huge batch of quinoa, I'll do two, maybe even three limes. It's absolutely delicious. And it really adds flavor to your salad. So then I'll take that and put them in one cup serving plastic containers, throw them in the freezer, pop one out um, every day or two or three a day, and I'll have one for lunch in my salad. It really makes a nice flavor profile. So Fred's Next, saying to add nutritional yeast to that. Good. Absolutely. Definitely. Then you're getting some more B12. That's a good thing. Nothing wrong with go. that. 
So anyways, anybody got any questions for the Starch Queens? Anybody? Nope. I hope well, you've all had well, a... What? While we're waiting for some questions, you know, what are some of the tricks that you use to succeed in this lifestyle? It's, we've got, I was just thinking today, Jean, and I was like, oh my goodness, we are almost to October 1st. I mean, today's the 11th. I mean, in four days, it's going to be the 15th of September and we're a couple of weeks to October 1st. So we're 90 days to the almost, you know, 90 West. So, you know, just a hundred days plus to the end of the year. And this is where a lot of people get really hung up in their health, diet, lifestyle, because of temptation. I don't know if you've been to Costco lately, but they've got Halloween candy out. They've got Halloween decorations. They've got Christmas stuff out. And you can't even go to a pharmacy without going through the aisle with all of the candy that's out. So the temptation is there. The party season is coming. Christmas parties are coming. Halloween parties are coming. And then, of course, the feast day, Thanksgiving. So how do we, how do we combat that? And for me, what's worked for me every year is what we always teach in our program is planning, execution, and truly knowing your why and, and having that in the very front lobe of this brain at all, all times. So recommitting every day. Like when I'm in bed in the morning, Nick gets up, the alarm goes off, and I, I literally lay in bed. And this is, came with habit. This is, came with truly reprogramming my thinking is to, I want to be grateful for everything in my life. So I literally will take the time to, you know, be, save my gratitudes for my, my health, my husband, my children, my grandson, my job, Jean, my Starch Queens program, plant-based Chico, all of you, you know, we're so grateful for you. So I'll sit there and I'll just go through that. And then I'll, then I'll literally go through my mantras of why I'm doing this because I want to be able to hike. I want to be able to bike. I want to be able to swim. I want to dance. I want to be active. So I go through that recommitment every single day, like clockwork. There's not a day that goes by that I do not recommit to me every day because we have to number one, love ourselves. We have to be committed to ourselves. We can't take ourselves as a joke you know, because we all, every one of you listening and watching adds value to this world. And we have to look at that as contributing value to society. And I want to be healthy when I'm doing it. And so I start my day every single day of the universe with those mantras and the gratitude. So that's how I psychologically stay committed. And then you get out of bed and it's like, oh, I'm in the world now. So now now you've got social media, you've got phone calls, you've got email, you've got commercials, you've got fast food drive throughs you've got grocery stores, you've got friends calling you for lunch that they want to go here and you're like, oh, oh, that used to be, you know, a place that would be, you know, high fat food that would always be, you know, I just would want to swan dive into the tostada or the margarita. And so again, but I go back and I remember my mantras and I go back to remember that I've lost 105 pounds and I don't want to ever travel back down that road again and I don't have heart disease and I don't have type 2 diabetes or cancer or all of those chronic diseases that so many people in our country have and then I make a decision that if you now it's like my girlfriend Mary Beth's like she asked me where do you want to go to lunch because you know she'll eat anywhere I want to eat and it's just adjusting your lifestyle and your good friends support you 100 percent and if they don't want to eat where you can eat or you feel comfortable eating, then you just tell them, you know, I'll have to have you over for lunch or we'll have to pick a different place because I'm committed to my goals. And that's respecting yourself. They're respecting your wishes and a good friend will obviously want to support your choices. So, so those, that's kind of long and drawn, Jean, uh, dr drawn out. But the more we get closer to the holiday season, the more temptation is there. It's a steady stream of junk food into my oh, office. Yeah. Well, I um, will not for, we, we got in my neighborhood, there is, I mean, it's like they truck them in and there's just kids going up and down the street. I mean, literally, I mean, it's like yeah. kids, I don't know who, who they are. Right. I mean, cause I don't see them in the neighborhood. Cause like, yeah, where'd you come from? But right. I, mean, there, I mean, there's, we, it's a very tight neighborhood. So people come in and, right. and it's a safe neighborhood. So, but I will, I refuse. I refuse to buy that crappy candy. So what I do, and it's a little more expensive, but I figure I'm, 
that's just me. I will spend a little bit more money. And they have at Trader Joe's little bags of nuts, and it has some dark chocolate in it. But for the most part, the bag is, is dark chocolate and, you know, a little bit of dark chocolate and mostly nuts. So it's a mix of nuts. And the kids look at it like, what the hell is this? You know, like, you know, but then they take it, you know, they don't like throw it back or anything, but they take I'm it. I'm sure the parents really enjoy it when they're going through their kid's candy bag. Oh, I'll just take that out. <laughs> exactly. This is good stuff. This is quality stuff. This is, this crap. is good stuff. <laughs> but I refuse. Yeah. I refuse. And yeah. we were just talking about this the other night in our coaching calls, and, and right. some of our Co Starch Queens members will actually go to Oriental Traders and purchase all those little tchotchke things, you know, right. like, you know, Halloween pencils and stuff like that, and little, you know, cutesy things that, you know, little pumpkins and whatever erasers and pencils oh, exactly so right. and they offer those in for halloween instead of candy right. and i'm right. sorry i just absolutely refuse absolutely refuse to contribute to that um, no i i won't either but i don't really have any trick-or-treaters but i'm just not going to do it either i won't do it i'm not going to do everything that we do every day in the starch queens program and plant-based chico and plant-based westchester we can't we can't contribute to this kid to the kids getting sucked into the starbursts and the candy bars and all of that. It's just right. so unhealthy for them. True. And so, but now for all of us and that's watching today, how do we stay centered as we go into the holidays? Again, it's your affirmations, it's your mantras, it's planning, planning, planning. Planning. Because I know, I mean, I'm going to Thanksgiving and I know, you know, I go with the to the carnivores. And so in, in Christmas, you know, and all those holidays coming up and I make sure number one, we've kind of, you know, worked it out over the years that I'll bring a salad because everybody can handle a salad and I'll bring some hors d'oeuvres that I can eat, you know, forget everybody else. I'll just bring something that I can make sure that I can eat mm -hmm. because I have to have something. I have I, to. I do the same thing. If I don't have something that I'm going to be diving in and, and it's hard. It really is because like, a lot of these dishes I've grown up with my whole life and I know what they are and I know how good they taste to me, you know, maybe not now. I don't know. I haven't, you know, tried them, but it's tough. I mean, so I make sure that I have something that I can have in terms of an hors d'oeuvre. Then for dinner, I usually bring my mini hot logic and I have my dish, you know, for Carl and I, and I bring two dishes and we just plug them in as soon as we get there. So we don't have to, in, you know, bother anybody else. And then, uh, so we'll get some of the salad and I'll bring dressing and I'll have the mini hot logic and then I bring a dessert. Okay. And usually for, for these, these are treats. These are not low caloric density. I'll make the chocolate peanut butter pie and you know, everybody likes that. Everybody has said, you know, Oh, Hey, this is good. I could, you know, live on this. Yeah, of course you can. Cause it's high caloric density stuff. So, you know, I only have that, you know, a couple of times a year but at least it's a dessert that I can have that I know that I'm not going to get sick on. So, and this right. is a treat. I mean, the rest of my life, you know, the rest of the time I'm on, you know, a weight loss journey. So, right. Yep. Yeah. No, that's, that's the, exactly the right way to, to handle it. Like we have a big wedding that we're going to this Saturday and um, they had on the RSVP card, your menu choice. And I, Nick wrote four, four vegan meals it wasn't an option. It was like, no, usually it's tri-tip or chicken, you know, choose what you want for the meal. And we just wrote in there, uh, four vegan meals and it is going to be catered, but I don't know what that's going to mean to a caterer because when we had Cassie's wedding seven years ago tomorrow, so tomorrow is their wedding anniversary. And the, the vegan option that we provided, because we were not whole food plant-based um, back then, we were just on the cusp of it. The vegan option was a big pasta salad that was just drenched in um, oil and then bread and some green salad with some yucky oil and vinegar dressing. And that was the people who were vegetarian and vegan. That's what they got. It's like, oh, I feel so bad about that now. So I'm going to bring my hot logic. I'm going to bring our potatoes and salad and a salad dressing. And I've got a really nice little cute um, uh, basket that uh, nobody's gonna know if it's a gift or a what's hidden in there. I'm gonna bring our food. And if the vegan option is what I think it very well could be, I'm just gonna 
part, you know, Nick and I'll just, I'll just take it out of the basket, which will be also my purse and there will be our meal and none the wiser, you know, and we're happy. We got to eat. We're not going to go starving because it's an out of town wedding. I know. An hour and, that, drive. and and so I don't think twice about it anymore. It's, it's about taking care of yourself. Well, the other strategy too, I make sure literally as my husband and I are driving because we're like, from one brother's house, at least maybe an hour and a half to two hours, you know, another brother is an hour, hour and a half. The other, my sister is, you know, an, an hour, hour and a half. So it, it's a ways. So I always make sure that I bring food in the car so that I am eating right up until we pull into the driveway. I mean, right. I mean, carrots, celery, you know, stuff like that. Snacky. And I'm eating, you know, good snacking foods. And I'll eat right up to the tour, pulling into the driveway, literally like the food is up to here. So when I walk in, I'm not hungry. Right. So if I'm not hungry, the inner raccoon's not coming out. Right. right. And, and so, yeah. So people that are in, the, in this lifestyle one day or 20 years, they're still going to be faced with temptation. And so again, it comes down to, you know, your convictions. Does it, for me, I'm allergic to chocolate. So I, I can't, chocolate doesn't bother me. And That's so sad. <laughs> But the majority of the desserts are chocolate, so it doesn't even affect me. And so, but there's other other things that do. You know, I, I love potato chips and chips and guacamole oh. and salsas and all of those things that I could, yeah. you know, just snack on endlessly. But again, I put my 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 why front and center and and call it good and and I'm good to go. So so Jean, those are great tips, and we're going to talk more about those as we get closer and closer to the holiday season. Jean, when is Dr. Deneyev with us again? Good question. Don't know. Coming up. Coming, coming up. up. Coming soon. Coming, coming soon. soon. Coming soon. He's Dr. Deneyev. in October. I want to say yeah. like, like, or like the second week of October. I can't remember. Right. I've slept since then. I put it on the yeah. calendar. And, right. and we are actually part of the summit that's happening right now with. Exactly. Uh, oh, we, I can't think of her name. Jennifer. Jennifer Z. And so right now, if you want some awesome uh, interviews, click on the link that we shared in Plant-Based Chico and Plant-Based Westchester and our face on our Facebook page. You can sign up for the summit and there's a lot of great plant-based professionals where you can listen yeah. in. It's uh, free and the free is a good thing. We like free. We like free. We like free. Thank you everybody for joining this Talking Tuesdays with the Starch Queens. If you're interested in learning more about our program, you can get a day of free recipes by signing up at, is it sqweightloss.com? No, starchqueens.net is the free day of recipes on the front, on the, on right. that website. And our weight loss program is sqweightloss.com. Yeah. So. so if you want a free day of recipes, go to starchqueens.net and check it out. I think you'll be pretty happy with those uh, day of recipes. You'd love it. And, uh, You'll give us uh, your email address. We'll send you some emails occasionally. We're not spammers. We don't do that. And uh, we're happy that you joined us tonight. We'll see you next week on Talking Tuesdays with the Starch Queens. Have a great night, evening. Night, John Boy. Night, Mary Ellen. And good night to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening.